Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls of all ages. This is Video Games on Tour. I'm Frank Clock. That's Frank and then Lock when you at the end, and today we're gonna be touring through Velvet Assassin. Alrighty. Let's get something clear. Have you ever wanted to play Metal Gear Solid, but you couldn't? Have you always wanted to play uh Hitman, but you couldn't? Or you have? Or something? Okay, le okay, let me let me um, roll back a second. If you enjoyed Metal Gear Solid, you're gonna hate this game. If you enjoyed Hitman, you're gonna uh, really hate this game. If you enjoyed Splinter Cell, you're gonna hate this game even more. If you wanted to combine all three games and take all the good out of it, you got this game. Now I know I'm bashing this game a little bit too much, but uh. God damn it. Alright, let's begin. I long to be back in the war. That was my true home. We were inhuman beings. Butchers on a field full of corpses. Corrupt and depraved. Only a sum of viscera, blood and bone. Creatures without souls. I was flown back to France to blow up a gigantic fuel depot, which the Germans had built in a bunker on the Maginot Line. The Reich was running out of oil. They guarded every barrel like the crown jewels. The main entrance was secured like the fear's bunker. Fortunately, every rat's nest has a second entrance. I had to try and find it. I jumped over a wooded area that bordered on the rear of the complex. Unfortunately, my equipment was stuck at the top of a blasted tree during the landing. To make matters worse, I saw that the area was guarded by Waffen SS troops. Those units had one basic rule take no prisoners, exactly like me. Alrighty. We got para dropped into enemy territory, and now it's time to kick some ass. Alright, before we begin, let's give a little bit of backstory. This game was developed, I believe, in 08-09 by Replay Studios. 
Ah, uh, and I believe they're now defunct. Okay, now that's out of the way. Now we play as uh, Violet Summers, who, believe it or not, is actually based on a real-world person. Violet Sisbo, Sasbo. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. A French-born uh, English operator for the SOE, Special Operations Executive, during World War II. Now, unfortunately, the real-world counterpart um, was captured during her second operation and was subsequently killed by her Nazi captors sometime later. I believe in 1945. Now, this real-world version... Not, sorry, not real-world, what am I saying? This fictional version uh, has several... Uh, successful operations. Alright. Now, I mentioned this game to be a little bit like Splinter Cell and Hitman. Uh, Alright, before I continue, I'd just like to point out exactly what this game is basically like. Oh, drink it on the job, eh? We'll see about that. Oh sweet jeez, I didn't need to do that. Sheesh. Excessive force for... as a punishment? Sheesh. But anyway, to describe this game, imagine this. Hitman having rough sex with Splinter Cell and Metal Gear Solid yelling at them like a frickin' football coach. Come on! Come on, man! You gotta stick your dick in there! No, 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 no! Shit! No, the other dick! God damn it! Okay. Time to... Uh, Shove up your thumb up there. No, 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 god damn it, you're the thumb. Ah, god damn it, we're not gonna win. You're gonna lose the team for us. Or the match for the team, or whatever. Ugh. But yeah. This is more Hitman Splinter Cell than it is Metal Gear Solid. And those three were actually really good games, but unfortunately this game... Ah... Uh, not so much. And it's... And I do get some sort of Metal Gear Solid 3 vibe. You know, you got your uh, equipment stuck on a tree. Uh, like Big Boss or Naked Snake. But unlike Naked Snake, it's not like you can climb the tree and grab your stuff. Which would come in quite in handy. Uh, now, before I forget... Let's see. There we go. The Knight's Cross one of the, is one of the highest military decorations of the Third Reich and will be awarded to for continuous bravery before the enemy. Yeah, that's the other thing about this game. Uh, collectibles. You see, collectibles, you know, are those things you just collect and you get some bonus stuff at it. You know, concept art, extra outfits, or whatever. Here... Um, they give you experience points. And probably the only time you ever get experience points. I think. Anyway. See, this game isn't that bad. I know I was just beating on it for, and whatever, but it actually isn't all that bad. People really gave it really poor reviews, like no higher than five. I would definitely give it a six, six and a half, maybe a seven. But there is a few things that really ruin this game for me. First off, the stealth mechanic doesn't exactly work. Well, actually, it does. What am I saying? It does. But it's just incorrect. <coughs> Excuse me. Incredibly inconsistent. Sometimes enemies will be right in front of you. I won't see you. Sometimes they'll be a mile away and they'll see. Oh crap! Look, it's a spy. But if you are familiar with, say, Splinter Cell, you know the score. You gotta wait for the enemy to separate, then kick their asses, and whatever. Uh, another mechanic is your stealth meter. Stealth meter is determined by that glowing silhouette on your person, or on the icon to the bottom left.
All right, buddy. Say hello to Mr. Slicey. Ah, uh, kind of too late. All right. You know the score with this game. These kinds of games. You got a body, got to hide it, got to wait for the other guy, so on and so forth. And keep low. For those who uh, who have played Call of Duty 4 and heard the quote, "Stay in the shadows." Well, that's exactly how you hide. You hide in the shadows, literally. You cannot hide unless you're in the shadow or in some sort of concealment. Now, of course, you can always just drop down, take cover, but uh, say out of line of sight. But hey, if you're familiar with stealth games, you already know the score. As I've said this like, already a couple of times already. Now, this game I really want to enjoy. It's actually not that bad, as, as I've said before. But the thing is, the mechanics are kind of broken. Like, graphically speaking, it's pretty good. I mean, this came out in 2008, 2009, uh, at a time, in my opinion, in which new IPs were starting out, people were just testing out new ideas of what they can do, what they can't do, or what they should and shouldn't do. And this was one of them. Uh, visually speaking, it's very beautiful in a very grim sense of the word. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, yeah, like Violet Summers looks pretty damn good, visually speaking. Although I'm not entirely sure what she's doing with a leather jacket and pants and whatnot. Whatever. And before I forget, that holster, the way it's positioned, kind of reminds me of uh, Mato Makoto Kusanagi, or Motoko, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Basically, the major from Ghost in the Shell and how she keeps her pistol upside down with the um, grip facing upwards. For all you firearm uh, aficionados out there, is there any particular reason why you would hold a or holster a weapon like that? And why wouldn't you just keep it with a grip down and stuff like that? Moving on. All right, now here's another mechanic of the game. Hold on. Okay, don't need that. Yeah. Here's the other mechanic of the, the game. Morphine here to increase my chances. Um, there's the use of morphine. Now before I go any further than that, remember this game takes place in the past. I'm not talking about like like 1940s past. I'm talking about like flashback past. So, basically it's Hitman with Splinter Cell with a little bit of Metal Gear Solid, and let's throw in some Black Ops 1 in there for good measure. That's essentially how it works. Now, for Morphine, yeah, well, hold on. Check this out. Whee! They won't be doing anything to anyone ever again. Yeah. Uh, Violet Summers is a pretty good looking psycho. In the words of, um, of Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation. Ooh, collectible. Box with fine cigars. The colleagues from the intelligence agency will be happy about this little gift. Oh yeah, and other than slicing people up, you, you also got theft. All right, let's go. Mission complete. Alrighty. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's move on.
The first step was done. I was finally in the bunker. The fuel depot was certain to be in the lowest level to protect it from bombing raids. The mishap with my lost equipment would not stop me, but without explosive charges, the situation was hopeless. But the Germans were sure to have explosives stored somewhere in the bunker. Soon they would see what they were good for. A German fuel depot and an explosive charge sounded like a very promising combination. The problem was I had to be back outside before this rendezvous developed chemistry. Yep. And we're inside the bunker. I just love it how she pronounces bunker in that accent. Right. See, here's one thing I really do not like about the game. You get spotted, you are as good as dead. Because they got guns, like automatic weapons, such as the MP40, and later the MP44 or the Sturmgewehr 44, however you like to say it. Uh, they will kick your ass, and you have no body armor, which is completely sad. Adding to this, there might be some times in which you can escape, you know, being detected. And you can take the guy out before, you know, he takes you out. But the problem is, is that your health, however, what, to wherever it decreases to, pretty much stays there. It's not a, like, a rechargeable healing thing in some more modern games of this era. Adding to insult to injury, you cannot take med kits with you. You can only use the med kits on the spot if you're injured. Which is a real pain in the ass. Especially when you have to backtrack to this location, or to any location which has a med kit, and then use it then. You cannot collect med kits and then use them on the fly. Which really pisses me off. Another mechanic that I really did not like in the game. Oh, hello. A suppressed 45. Cult. What's it doing all the way out here? I wonder. Oh well, doesn't matter. Also, the game also kind of becomes the sort of survival-ish kind of game. Now, let me put it this way. You have seven shots. Which is understandable. Hold on. And Hansaitic something something. Sites Hamburg, Bremen, and Lubick. Awarded with this medal for a bravery and special war merits of World War One. Oh goody. Alright. Now the pistol or really any weapon um, really should only be used as a last resort because you have so few bullets available to you. You have one magazine of this pistol and that's it. There's no more ammo to be had. You'll get another weapon later on in this mission, but it really comes out in the end. And that's pretty much it. Come here, you sucker! Ha ha ha! Right. Also, lighting is really good in this game. And it's important because, well, when you stay in the shadows, you are pretty much hidden. Another thing I like about this game is peeping through uh, the keyhole, which comes really in handy. Oh, comes really in handy when. Am I saying that right? Whatever. Anyway. All right, you. Or maybe, never mind. Okay. I'm gonna wait out here. You'll never find me. Ha ha ha. But yeah. Lighting in this game is pretty damn good. For all it's worth. Alright. There he is. Gonna wait for him to move on. Hopefully they won't spot me. Alright. 
Now I'm going to demonstrate the use of the pistol. This pistol, or really any weapon, has to be used as a last resort. I say this because A, you only have few bullets, and B, you fire pretty damn slowly even if you had a bunch of bullets with you. Also, in the famous words of Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation, the morphine is a get out of fuck up free card. To paraphrase, I'm not sure if he said that exactly. And also to quote, uh, additionally quote him, um, morphine is really no good if you got more than one person who spotted you. Because that's all the time you're ever gonna have. Oh, and you're going to be spending most of this game crouched, so... Yeah, enjoy that view while you can. Alright. Also, aiming is not all that great either, when you think about it. Especially at a distance. But my god, would it come in handy. gonna pursue until after he uh, cycles his next walking pattern yes there are walking patterns in this game not like Metal Gear Solid 5 or really any other Metal Gear Solid game yeah this is this game resembles more of the older stealth games such as you know the early 2000s and all that with predetermined walk patterns yada 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 Yep. Anyway. The game, like I said before, and I can't really stress it enough, but the game is not that bad. Would I recommend it? No. No, I would not, because it's not for the faint of heart. Not even for those who, who would love the pain. Because frustration is going to kick in pretty damn quickly. The checkpoint system, also, to, uh, to add into all this, is ab abysmal, to say the least. Because not only are checkpoints few and far in between, say I screwed up with that last guy and he shot me to death, well, I'm going to be starting almost at the beginning of this particular segment. And that really went far and beyond really piss me off. Alright. Let's see. Any collectibles? No, just med kits. Yeah, this particular area of this level um, is essentially the hub. And you'll soon see why. It would have made no sense to go in there without a gas mask and explosives. Yeah, so our mission is to blow up a fuel depot with some b bombs and stuff. All right, let's go this way first. All right, we are clear. I count at least two med kits in that room, so it's a place to come back to if you get wounded. Preferably when you're coming back, not when you're going in. Gonna wait for this guy. Hey, 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 buddy. Say hello to Mr. Slicey. Oh, oh! I've seen worse kills than that, but whatever. Alright, got that guy. Alright. Now, here you got two options. You can whistle and therefore stab the guy. But if you really don't want to take the chance, you blow his friggin' head off. Like so. Yeah, not to mention, I believe the Call 45 in this game is the only suppressed weapon. Every other weapon is pretty damn loud. But we'll get the job done one way or the other. 
Now here is one of the more brilliant parts of the shadowing system. You see that fan down there? We're going to follow the fan. Well, the fan's shadow as we're moving forward. Now when I first played this particular part, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. But, stick to the shadows, man. As I believe it was Captain McMillan from Call of Duty 4 that had said it. Oh, crap. I really hope they didn't hear me. Damn. Also, another thing about this game is that it's rigged. And what I mean by that is that you don't jump with spacebar, you don't crouch, well actually you can crouch with, you know, control button, but you can go prone, which could really come in handy, as was demonstrated in Metal Gear Solid 5, of all places, or really Metal Gear Solid in general. <laughs> to do actions, you gotta press the left or right mouse button, really. And you can't even see the door open. Man, these guys are gonna get fired one way or the other. Alright. Going to wait for the next light to come up and on. Alright. Warning. The door was electrified. I definitely had to turn off the power first. Okay, the fact that he did not see me deserves to get shanked in the face. Yeah! Yeah, what now, buddy? Alright. Alright, no need for a med kit. That's fine. Yeah, try to limit your killings with a knife. Because you're not going to get really far with an empty clip. Or really no ammo at all. Right. Lights seem to be on, so. Hmm. Now, if I try to go shank that guy, he's definitely gonna see me. But I don't wanna take the chance. Oh, let's screw it. Don't see me, don't see me. You don't see shit, but, but. God damn it. See, I'm so fucking scared I can't even talk. Got him. Got him. Die, I got them both. Ha ha. So, apparently, flipping the switch, um, turned out to be pointless. But hey, it was a good distraction, and I clipped their asses. Yeah. If you are going to use your gun, uh, try to limit your shots to kill shots, please. So take time in aiming. Because otherwise, your ass is grass. Or something like that. Power should be off now. Alright. This particular area is clear, so you're free to really run around. There's sh Except for those guys at the fan room that I showed you earlier, which you should be able to avoid, no problem. Well, yeah. They are not going to pursue you because they are more or less uh, nice. blocked by the unopenable doors that you have to vault over. What also really upsets me, though, about this game is that this game easily could have been one of the best stealth games of its era. But it got ruined by all these broken mechanics. Incredibly difficult enemies to fight, which you're not really supposed to fight except for like, you know, stabbing them in the face or whatever. But not only that, you know, a uh, very minuscule uh, saving system. Like, if I were to die right now, I would have to redo this whole section again. Yeah. Let the frustration boil over. An old yet well preserved telescope. Surely valuable for a collector. Yeah, we're gonna rob these people blind. I love it. Alright. 
Oh, and not only that, but the character, sad to say, is not very memorable. Sure, she looks pretty and all, you know, has a great accent or whatever, but you don't really get to know her beyond that. Even with Agent 47, he was, he was memorable because of you know, his unique style. His unique, you know, visual appearance is another thing. With a freaking barcode on his back, on the back of his head. I mean, what does Violet Summers got? Hell of I know. An elaborately decorated harmonica. Surely it was a great importance for, to its former owner. All right. Now let's talk about the upgrade system. As I've mentioned before, upgrade is determined by how many collectibles you find throughout the game. And your upgrades are limited to three specific classes, Morphine, Stealth, and Strength. I'm not entirely too sure on what Strength is all about. I'm sure it's for recoil control on, the, on your weapons, but that's a whole different story. Maybe it makes your weapon uh, more accurate? I don't know. But Morphine, well, let's put it this way. First, it's going to increase the duration of the Morphine. So you got more time to kill people and more time to get out of fuck up. Eventually you'll be able to upgrade to have more than one morphine needle, or syringe I should say. At most that I've seen was about three I guess. It could be more depending on how many stars you got. Stealth, well, believe it or not, it doesn't really determine how stealthy you really are. If I remember correctly, let's see. Yeah, increased speed of sneaking. So basically, just how fast you can, uh, you know, walk crouched, which could really come in handy in some sections of the game. Don't get me wrong. But I think morphine might be a little bit more useful because, well, shit, I don't know. Okay, never mind. Strength uh, increase the number of hits you can take. So wouldn't that be endurance? I mean, I know I'm a bit of a Fallout fan, but I'm pretty sure Endurance is the proper word for how many hits you can take before you go down. Not that it would really matter, because all it would do is prolong your suffering before you realize, crap, I gotta redo this all over again. And lacking ammo, or really using a knife, is not gonna help too much. But for now, having an increased sneak speed would actually come in handy. Yeah, the no the difference in ooh, more morphine. Yeah. So yeah, morphine is a sort of a bullet time thing that lets you sneak around enemy or run around enemies without them noticing you because reasons. All right. Careful, broken fragments. Creeping silently over that was impossible. Now before I forget, because I was trying to mention this earlier, but there's a very little following of this game. Which is understandable because this game was not all that great. I mean it's it's for me it's sort of a love-hate relationship with this game. I mean I did get this game for a measly 74 cents, believe it or not. Hold on. Yep, and time to hide. Yeah, we, that was probably the leader of this whole base, and we capped him right in the face. Well, the back of it, anyway. And his boys are gonna sneak, uh, check him out. Hey, the boss is dead. Let's just sneak around and not care at all. Yeah, so basically what I learned play, replaying this particular section of the game is that if you go into a door like this that, you know, teleports you to the different section, you can still look back here and they won't be any wiser. They're not going to be smart enough to say, Hey, maybe the assassin walked through the door. And they don't hit the alarm. Their, their leader is dead and they don't hit the alarm. Great work, fellas. Great work indeed. Alright. Now, the reason I capped him this early is pretty simple, because I didn't want to go across the broken glass and risk alerting the enemy. His key is quite crucial. Oh, and he also has a med kit, which is kind of handy. 
Oh. These letters often contain useful information. Very interesting. A redder in which could contain useful information. Gee, thanks. Dear Gretchen, my thoughts turn constantly to how you are doing. Please don't worry about me. Even if so much is demanded of us, we will come through it together. Nothing bad can happen to me, for I sense that I have a guardian angel. Many of my comrades have wound up in hospital with poisoning just because they do not pay attention to their gas masks. But that cannot happen to me. Please don't worry about me. We are even safe from airplanes here. What could happen to me? Don't give up hope, dearest. Whatever happens. One day I will return home, and then I will always be there for you. Heartfelt hugs and kisses. Your Carl. Yeah, so that's not gonna happen. What could possibly go wrong? Famous last words, though I do remember. Uh, as such. Ah, oh, shit. What could possibly go wrong? Well, one of two things. First, some hot looking lady puts a cap on your ass, or that same hot lady, uh, introduces you to Mr. Slicey. Thumbs up for anyone who gets that reference. Obviously a precious ring, which has been handed down to the heir in a traditionally military family. How do you know it's military? <laughs> Fuck if I know, we're just gonna assume that. Remember when I mentioned that you need to press con certain controls in order to do certain tasks? Yeah, apparently you can't go prone unless you are opted to in one of these sections. Now the one thing I did enjoy about this game is that the Germans speak German and not, you know, in German accents, with speaking English in German accents, I should say. And they speak pretty damn good German. I'm assuming they are German speakers. But hey, you know, I know some Americans can speak good German too. Anyway. Yeah, so in this section, we are getting the gas mask, and in the last section that we just went through was all about getting explosives. Alright, so this guy's just gonna stand around like a big old dick. Dickity dick dick. Alright, gonna wait for him to move away. He can't, he can't see me, that's a good thing, that's a good thing. Alright. Hey, hey, buddy. Oh, 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 right in the kidney. Right, gonna get out of here before they notice something is wrong. And they never knew who did it. I am so proud. Patrick Bateman would be proud. I think. Maybe. I don't know, who cares? But he would definitely be proud, I know that much. Alright. Now is a good time to book it. I'm actually amazed no one can really hear the glass shards. I mean, they made such a big deal out of it earlier on, but apparently not. Alright, so this section is clear. Now, it might look easy from the way I've been portraying this, but yeah, it takes practice and it takes practice patience and before I forget there is one more thing that really kills the game for me no replayable levels that is right no replayable levels you complete one mission and you will not be coming back to it and that really sucks because believe it or not there are actually some good levels in this game at least one that hopefully we'll get around to doing sometime in the future. Now we'll be coming into this room soon, but not from this side, because it's locked. Good old Resident Evil mechanics in there too, guys. You guys are awesome, but not really. Or actually, no, what am I saying? These guys really try to make a good stealth action game. But unfortunately, it really falls on its face. That was the fuel dealer. The room was full of 
Also, I have a gas mask on, and you might not want to get rid of it in this area, because you will die. Uh, and of course... Oh. Yeah. Now, if I remember correctly, I was trying to talk about what made the other characters memorable. I mean, look at Agent 47. He's memorable. Look at Sam Fisher, he's pretty damn memorable too. Mainly because he was voiced by Michael Ironside, which is not too bad. That's, in fact, that's, that's awesome. And of course, you know, freaking Solid Snake and Big Boss and virtually every other character in Metal Gear Solid. Here, the only thing memorable about her is... Well, you could say good looks, but also the freaking Morphe. Which is, well, in some ways, uh, quite memorable in its own right. It's definitely unique. It stands out from the other South Action games if you put this on a list with someone. But if you ask most people who played stuff games, well... Duh, oh, wow. Wow, these guys are just going at it like a freaking married couple, but well, whatever. Stealing chocolate for high treason. <laughs> That's funny. Alright. Yeah, you might not want to use pistols in this area. Because as she said, things can go with a bang. Well, that wasn't very original. You should have taken off his gas mask. Which he kind of does in some areas at this particular level. Alright, there's another sentry around here. Or I'm just gonna sneak around here. Wait for him to walk away. Ah ha ha! Ha <laughs> ha! Sucker! Oh. oh. He's definitely noticed something wrong. Ah, oh, crap! Ah, oh, god damn it! Yeah. Yeah. And guess where we start off at? Yep, way back here. Now, luckily for me, we already completed the second section, so all we gotta do is just go back down there. And redo the entire conversation about the goddamn stolen chocolates. Sheesh. The nerve of some people. But yeah. When you ask someone else, you know, the average, you know, stealth genre guy. Uh, to name virtually every well-known, well, really any existing stealth action game. That was the fuel depot. The room was full of poisonous fumes. In addition, there were explosive barrels open. The firearms were used, everything could go up in a bang. Now yeah, so if you ask the average person, hey, you know, name every stealth action game, they might actually go to mention that, hey, you know, Hitman, Metal Gear, Splinter Cell, maybe even Siphon Filter if you really want to go that far. But you would be hard pressed to find anyone who really knows of this game, and let alone some good memories of it, or something good to say. Yeah, I'm not sure who's saying what. I'm sure the guy to the right is talking about, hey, you stole my chocolate, and the guy to the left is like, yeah, yeah, I didn't steal your goddamn chocolate, but whatever. I mean, some of these conversations are pretty damn funny. You know, it, it reminds me of, of um, no one lives forever a spy in arm's way, or really no one lives forever in general. Oh yeah, and you can stand too, and they won't notice you. You have you're, you're glowing blue or purplish, and they can't see jack shit, which is kind of funny when all said and done. So uh, yeah. Between a bad game and not very memorable memorable character the game really did fall on itself in a lot of ways and it is actually kind of sad too because the game easily could have been really good but obviously it's not 
And if people increase, like if if there were modders out there who could fix the stealth mechanics and you know increase the checkpoint count, this game easily could have been a lot less frustrating and a lot more enjoyable when all is said and done. But of course, this has a very small following, if at all, and um. And therefore, not too many modders. There are like one or two mods I think people made, but I don't think they had anything to do with the gameplay. Or pretty much anything with the game at all. Maybe it's like some sort of fan thing. Fan fiction sort of thing. I don't know. What am I saying? Anyway. There shouldn't be anyone else in this particular room. Okay, so we're clear. Da ha ha! funny prank. Shotgun shells. I don't need freaking shotgun shells. I need 45 caliber rounds. Which, by the way, eh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure a 45, a Colt 45, is not exactly suppressible. Oops. Yeah. Another thing with this, you can't even climb with the space bar or whatever. You actually need to press a freaking button to do that. Which kind of pisses me off. But yeah. Like I said, if mods could come out for this game, fixing all the broken stuff, or if the developers, if they weren't defunct, were able to patch the game considerably and make it much more enjoyable, or at least a lot less frustrating, if they could have stood a chance to make a sequel. Because this game was released in 0809, there hasn't been a sequel since. Or really any game for that matter. Alright, let's take plant explosives. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. What was that? Out we go. Ooh, shoddy. Yes, let's take the shoddy. Let's get the hell out of here. And this is where all that stealth really goes out the window because this is like the action version. Like, you are forced to be not stealthy at all. So, yeah. Alright, we got those guys. Let's get the hell out of here. Freedom! Alright, that's all we got for today, folks. I'm Frank Clock. That's Franker than Lock. We need the end. Have some chips and salsa, baby.